So I wanted to talk about something you could do with grid containers in Godot that would allow you to use other nodes besides control nodes. And it takes a little bit of math, a little bit of figuring out, you know, but I, th I think it can help a lot. So just a little bit of a, a brief introduction to grid containers. Uh, here in my uh, scene, my game scene, I have a grid container kind of defined as this top UI. And that's really just these three buttons. And you can see that the green icons, these are actually texture buttons. They fall under that control hierarchy. And what that lets you do is use these control nodes to very easily kind of structure your UI or, or whatever you're using within those, those containers. So this is a grid container. And one of the very simple things I can do is just define different number of columns over here on the right. In the inspector, three columns puts these buttons side by side, but I can drop it down. You know, it's a lot easier than moving things around yourself manually. Underneath this custom con constants, uh, I always want to say constraints, but custom constants, uh, you can define V separation and H separation. That just gives you more control over how far apart these containers are, or these control nodes are spaced. So for V separation, that's not going to do anything because we're in uh, three columns and there's nothing uh, vertically. But if I turn on H separation horizontal, uh, then I get a little bit more control over, over how I want to do that. Uh, I'm not really sure how it determines the defaults. I, I'm not really sure how it how it does that, but uh, maybe that, maybe that's something to look into. So the the trick that I want to talk about is how to use grid containers, and I'm sure this is probably applicable for uh, you know they have horizontal. We can take a look agile node. I guess they have H uh, H split container, and I'm sure V split. I guess. Uh, you know, containers like that where you're not doing a grid, but rather just a column or a row on its own. Uh, so anyway, what I want to do is I want to use control nodes like grid container with non-control nodes. So what I have set up in this project is a grid system that's kind of a custom node in which I'm not using a grid container. I've kind of defined my own grid system. And it's this complicated little bit of logic where I've got my cell width, cell height, grid width, grid height. And I'm uh, doing a lot of work uh, that I probably don't need to do. But it doesn't play very well right out of the box with the grid container system, even though this is a control node. So I'm not 100% sure why that's the case. But I, I think it's just because since I'm not populating this system with other control nodes, I'm instead populating it with uh, regular node 2Ds. I can show you what that scene looks like. It's this tree scene. So it, it's a simple simple structure like this where I have uh, a node 2D sprite, and that's pretty much it. And it's just this little tree sprite. So because that's what's being populated within this control node, it's just not going to play very well with the grid container. So all that to say, coming back to this, what I'm going to be doing is adding this grid system to land sections. So let me run this code real quick. Just I should have done this to begin with. So this is what I have. This is a this is a block and of trees, and this represents my grid system. This is one grid system. Now what I want to do is I want to spawn multiple. So I'm going to uncomment this. Uh, let's see. I'm going to uncomment this, and now I have two. Right. So this is me loading my first grid system into land sections, the control node grid container. Now I'm going to do it twice. So if I run this, not great, right? They're, they're overlapping. And the reason there's even a little bit of separation at all is because under land sections, I've already defined two and two for V separation and H separation. So if I took those away, uh, it's like this. Uh, still not great. I, I, I'm not sure how these defaults are being, uh, being determined. I think it actually is separating the two grid systems a little bit. But the point is that it's not taking into account all the node 2Ds that are within that system. Now, one solution would be to go into the grid system. And instead of doing all this uh, crazy stuff that I've done on my own with the, with the grid, I would just continue to use grid containers, and I think everything would work well. But I feel like you're going to get into a lot of situations where you're not doing things the ideal way uh, just to give you a little bit more control, which is kind of what I decided. So this right here, this is the code that you're actually looking for in the video. Uh, basically, I'm just setting the V separation, the H separation of the land section's grid container manually. And I'm grabbing my cell height, my grid height within my grid system, and I'm using that to create some separation. And I added 20 just to make it clear that things are separating. So let me run this again. 
And now you can see they're separated exactly how I want. If I take away 20, and I run that, now they're right side by side, and it's perfect. But that's because I've based the separation off of what's within the grid. So if, if you have a system or you have uh, anything that you want to be separated like the control nodes happen automatically, you just have to find out what those what that spacing will look like uh, for yourself, and it wasn't that hard for me because I'm I'm working with a grid system. Uh, yeah, so that's really all I have to show is that you know it's possible to still draw benefits from things like grid containers, even if you're not just using control nodes. You just kind of have to figure it out. Uh, I searched for this for a while and finally found how to do this. Uh, so make sure that you're not trying to set this by calling it off of the the grid container instance itself, you would actually have to use the set method. Uh, but once you have that, it, it's pretty simple. So definitely play around with that. I hope that's helpful, you know, in little situations within your games. It's definitely helpful for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one.